Alright, what's up guys? So today, I'm gonna go over one of the most complicated matchups in the game, and it's really hard to teach this matchup one-on-one -on -one and repeat, and like rinse and repeat and say everything over again and get everything across. So I think the best way to teach this matchup is to make just a really long video, and I'm, I'm expecting this video to probably be around an hour or so long, but it's going to give you a lot more important information than I could give while coaching because there's just so much to go over and there's just going to be things that I'm going to forget uh, trying to coach somebody. So this is like a video <clears throat> you should probably watch before you get coaching on TVT from me because I think most of the stuff that I should be focusing on in TVT for you or the person or like anybody is more of replay analysis. You should already probably have figured out what build order you want. Um, I can even help you find some build orders. But basically this video is going to give you the general consensus on TVT as a whole almost. I might leave some details out and we'll talk about uh, some of the theory in TVT. But TVT is super complex. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in my little rubric here I guess if you want to call it that. This is what I think the five ways you can improve at StarCraft. This works at all levels of the game. This works at Bronze all the way to Grandmasters. I, I think that this stays true at almost all aspects of any play. So I'm just going to go through this really quickly on some of this, and then I'll show you why this relates to TVT and why this is so important. So the first one we have here is mentality. So think of this like a, um, like a pyramid, right? Like you've ever seen like food pyramids? At the very bottom of this, the base of, the, of our pyramid is going to be mentality. Mentality is the thing that you do, like it's your motivation, it's your determination, it's all the stuff that I've listed here, setting up multiple short-term goals, so getting from plat to diamond, you know, to finally your end goal of masters. Having realistic expectations. Um, this basically is like you are in gold or you're in plat, you don't play like a Masters player. You're not ever going to be playing like a Masters player until you start working towards getting better. Accepting losses. So there's a lot of stuff here. I'll link this. You can look at some of this. I'm just going to go through some of the general stuff. Basics. This is uh, the mechanics. I've named this mechanics because this is SV production, uh, supply blocks, hotkeys, multitask. This is like a general StarCraft. This is stuff I can't teach anybody. This is like I can show you but I can't teach it to you. I can't show you how to multitask or like I can't like I can't multitask like Polk. Only Polk can multitask like him, right? And how did he get there? He did that by practicing a ton and playing on his own time. No one really showed him how to multitask. That's just something that comes with a lot of experience. So that's what uh, mechanics are. Now, let's get down to what we're going to be focusing on for TVT. So some of this stuff like mentality and basics, just keep this in mind. This is stuff that before you even before I can even help you, this is stuff that you've got to control on your own time. And you don't even need a build order to learn the basics of StarCraft, SCV production, supply blocks. You really don't even need to have a logical, concise build order to understand how to use all that other stuff. So once you've got all that down, we've got the build order. This is where TVT gets a little complex, and this is why I'm a little hesitant sometimes on uh, coaching it, because I want to make sure that I'm very clear on why this is so complex. If you were to get a bunch of Grandmasters and Masters Terrans into the same room, and have them say, what is the best build order in TVT, chances are, I'm willing to bet, no one is really going to come down to the best build order. Because there really isn't the best build order in TVT. It's it's like you have to have other things like what map are we playing on? What what strategy is the other Terran going for? Because sometimes something you scout from the Terran you have to adjust in your own build order. You know, there's a lot of different things going on with build order in TVT. Because there's so many different build orders. There's I don't think there's a matchup in the game that has as many build orders that TVT does. And let me just let me just name a few just to show you how many build orders in TVT there are. You have Proxy Marauder, you have uh, Proxy Three Racks Marines where you pull SCVs, you have Proxy Two uh, Two Racks Reaper, Proxy Three Racks Reaper, um, Two Racks Reaper in the base and expand off of it. Um, you have 
Cloak Banshee off one base, Cloak Banshee off two base. Uh, tank drops on one base, tank drops on two base. I mean, like, the list goes on and on. I mean, this is just, like, naming, you know, some of the few ones. I mean, you can go for CC first. You can go two base Terran, one base Terran. I mean, there's just, like, limitless opportunities for Terran right now in Legacy of the Void. And this might have been different back in maybe, like, Wings of Liberty. And there's some stuff. And, like, the thing that's really changed the matchup is Heart of the Swarm with the boosted medevacs. And now, in Legacy of the Void, you can pick up tanks, so there's a lot of complexity that goes on now with the build orders and how you decide what you need to use for them. But build orders um, is a very important thing to understand TVT, and the thing that you have to understand with build orders is that there is no perfect build order. And if you have a Terran that's trying to tell you that there is the perfect build order in TVT, they're just full of crap because there isn't. Any any Terran could come, like if you, like I said, you get a Terran, you know, ask a bunch of different Terrans what their, uh, what they think is the best build order in TVT. They might come down to like a couple of few things, like some safe build orders, but there really isn't. It usually comes down to usually uh, what point number four is here is scouting and knowledge of the game. So basically any build order can be changed to counter another build order in TVT, just as long as you have the proper scouting and the proper tools. Because starting out on one base or two bases really doesn't, really, it does not really matter in TVT. It really doesn't. <clears throat> so, I guess the thing that we're going to focus on in what, like my overall point in build orders is you pick one build order and stick with it. Try to learn its uh, the weaknesses, the strengths. Um, what can you do for scouting to improve the build order, like in point number four that I'll get to in a second? What can you do to fix that build order? And um, I guess what I'll end up doing is I'll show, um, I'll probably end up putting a link to a build order or something. I'm not really sure how I'll go about that. I don't really want to show the build order right now or play it out or anything. This is basically... Uh, this video is more or less just the overall general view of TVT, but whatever build order you do find, you need to stick with it and continue to use it and learn the in and out of it. So now that we've covered that, let's talk about the next point here that I have, scouting and knowledge of the game. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go in the game of StarCraft. Let me switch scenes here. Let me show you what I mean as far as scouting uh in this matchup so let's just uh scouting comes at different times though so like when you're doing your overall build order there are specific timings that you need to be scanning to see what they're doing and normally the scan timings in tvt is the second scan so you know like when your orbital finishes you drop the first mule the second mule that you get that's when you're gonna scan the terran main and that's what you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see what they're doing and I'll I'll uh, bring up a couple replays to go over this to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about but let's first talk about something like even before scouting just like because um, even before you scout in the early game I think what's more important to understand is how you need to position yourself on the map during the game so right now I have a bunch of Marines everywhere and them and this is gonna change per map but you always want to try to get tower control with your marines. Sometimes you might not be able to contest that. And sometimes they might uh, take that away from you. But try to control those watchtowers as much as possible. So the thing, the important thing that I have going on here is I have some marines across the map. And notice how calculated these marines are placed. So right here this marine is placed in a spot that, let's say his ground army were to move this way. He cannot pass through this marine without giving, like, without attacking it. And the same thing for this marine. I actually moved it over, but you want to like keep this marine like right about here. He can't attack this way without interrupting this marine. He can't through. He can't run through middle without going through division on the towers. You know, let's say he kills this marine. You have another marine right here that'll let you know. Okay, where is he? You have some marines on the outsides of the map to kind of look for drops. And sometimes they'll even uh, go over some of these, and maybe this one. So you want to put marines in attack paths that they might be in. So like you might want to put one more right here, so you have one that uh, notifies you a little sooner when they're going to be coming. 
so here comes this marine. So you wanna you wanna get these marines in places where you feel like you're the darkest on the map. So like right here is a good place too. You get to see kind of where they're gonna be at on the map. So I mean right here, uh, you might not ever get the perfect vision control in your TVTs, but the most important thing you need to do is is at least have these two marines right here and a marine on the outskirts like this. So you can look for drops and you can see when his army is gonna be moving out on you so when you're right here between these two bases you can react accordingly like where do you need to go because that's super important in TVT of where you need to be and I'll, I'll talk about early game scouting in a little bit with the replay analysis but I wanted to go in game first and go over uh, vision control because this is kind of what uh, let me go to switch the scenes here again this is kind of what um, knowledge of the game and scouting is in the late game and like mid game and stuff for TVT, this is kind of like what you need to do. So let's talk about, um, so this all kind of comes into the knowledge of the game right now. So like, this is what we're focusing on right now. Um, so let's say you, you have to look at the map. So basically when you're looking at a map, what, what are places that you can siege at? So let's just like take a couple tanks here. So I'm going to leave some army. I'm going to bring some army in other places. I'm just going to talk about general strategy and some knowledge here on TVT. On some basic things that maybe people don't really understand. So the fundamental thing in TVT is where can you set up on the Terran to make their life really hard? So like when you look at this map, what is, like, what is the most deadly positioning that you can have on a Terran? And it's usually getting inside the main base. Anytime you get inside the main base or have a good siege on that, it's pretty crazy. And then other things, too, are sieging up uh, bases. So, like, right here on this map, this could be a good spot to be sieging on and dropping your Marines in the front. So, like, you see, like, right here, it's almost got kind of, like, ramp control. If he is separated from his army right now, like, let's say he had his army over here. If you look at these tanks, it's going to be really hard for him to come over here and interrupt us. And you leave a couple marines to kind of defend the tanks. So this is um, an example of position in TVT and why it's so important. And you got to make sure you don't allow... That's what, like, this marine over here, like, so if he had a marine like this... This is what you're trying to look for to make sure he can't get on you because you don't want the Terran to have a good position on you. Um, another good position is usually the the nail in the coffin in TVT is if you can ever get a position like this. You see how this tank has uh, control of their ramp. Now maybe like uh, you want to be up a bit more so he can't attack from the other sides, but. Anytime you have control of a ramp like this with the tanks, you've probably won the game most likely. Because if you have like, you know, five or six tanks on the top of this ramp, there's no Marines coming up here. There's no way. There's, and then you have control of his main base, all his production, all his supply depots. This is why you see a lot of Terrans prioritizing going for the main base or something. Because that's going to be the thing that ends the game almost definitely when you get in there. So there's, there's each map is a little bit different on where you can position. So this is like, in every map you're, you always wanna try to see if you can end the game off ramp control. If you can get this kind of control in any map, you probably won the game if you have this kind of control on their ramp. Now something that's also worth noting um, that I just wanna mention as far as knowledge of the game goes Anytime like you have an army out on the map already, you don't want to rally to your army. You want to keep everything back at home. So if you ever see yourself or notice yourself getting into a lot of base trade scenarios, it's probably because you're not leaving enough army at home to defend it. So normally you only want to bring out a portion of your army out on the map in TVT and use it. And it, that's normally in every matchup as well. You want to leave back at home some army to deal with it. So like, you know, I, I would, in a real game, I'd have everything rallied to my natural, ready for a counterattack. And I'd want probably a couple more siege tanks in this, probably like two or three back at home. So if he tries to do like a counter push, you can basically stop him from doing that. So you have some army back at home. If he does a double drop in your main or whatever it is, at least you're kind of prepared for it. 
so you can kind of protect yourself a little bit. Um, but back to like positioning in TVT, another thing that's really important, and the reason why I chose this map to kind of showcase this, is ramp uh, cliff control. Cliff control is really important too, it's kind of the same thing as ramp control. It's not as deadly as ramp control, but cliff control, I'm sure a lot of Terrans have been in this scenario where they have the lower ground, the uh, tanks in the low ground, and all your production is getting uh, shot at. So you have to keep in mind what map you're playing on in TBT because you have to you have to remember where you're placing your buildings. So like right now, these two barracks and um, maybe even this siege tank are kind of in danger. And some maps are kind of just hard to adjust for this. But if they get some sort of siege positioning like this, you're going to lose production and that's really bad. Or like on this side of the map, so you can see where my add-ons are on this side. So if he sieges up right here, and I place the barracks up here, he can't attack the add-ons. But this Terran can attack the add-ons. So if your stim is researching right there, these three tanks are hitting it. And you're going to lose your stim. Whereas maybe, let's say we're base trading, and you're over here, I could still build units and I have my add-ons still. So that's... That's another thing you have to keep in mind. There's there's a lot of little things in TVT that go a long way. Um, but yeah, ramp control, ramp control, positional advantages on maps are really important to look out for because these kind of positions. So let's say that you have like an orbital right here. You know, let's say like I had a bigger army and like let's say I had like. Um, you know, let's say six tanks down here and two tanks up here. Uh, you, let's just say I was able to get this position on you. I mean, I'm attacking your third base and I'm in your main base. You know, getting your uh, production. Will that ever happen in a real game? Probably not. You'd probably never be able to get right here where the command center is down. But, it, I mean, it could happen. Like, if I sieged over here and you moved your whole army to deal with this, and then I came in over here to put this positioning on, it's going to be pretty tough for you to hold. I mean, it's probably going to be a favorable trade for me. And then something I just thought about that is uh, that I wanted to mention to just kind of backtracking. So I might do this sometimes. I might backtrack just because I thought of it. This is why I like to make a video like this so I can remember some thoughts. But back when we were talking about build orders, and we were talking about, like, what, what would a Terran think is the best build order? And like I said, no Terran is really going to come down to what is the best build order, but you're going to get a very common consensus. It's going to be, what build order can we do that will give us stim in combat for Marines the quickest, if we're going bio. I mean, mech is like another topic. I'm not really covering mech. I'm only going to cover bio and stuff. But what what build can we do that's going to give us our stim combat and give us 2-2 at a better timing than most other Terran builds will? So that's another thing too that's really important is having upgrades in this matchup and that's something I wanted to mention is uh, really huge in build orders. And you'll notice that a lot of good Terran builds have a have a very good transition for stim and combat and getting upgrades. So that's something to also keep in mind. Um, another thing to also keep in mind is let's say like instead of building a bunch of medevacs you build some vikings. So, if you do take control of a ramp like this, and you have Viking control, like the air superiority, because normally what you'll do is you'll send a medevac in front to see like what's out in front. But if you have three Vikings, because the, the other Terran's going to do the same thing, and like let's say he has tanks over here too, or it's like a siege line, you know. Um, if you have air control in TVT, it can be pretty devastating as well. Um, it's not as common anymore since. Um, you can lift up the tanks and move them. It's still pretty common though. I mean, early game Vikings are pretty important, but I'd say they're not as important in the mid game as they used to be since everything is so fast and chaotic. And sometimes you just end up losing the Vikings anyways. But this position and everything that I've, I've been talking about is really important. And keeping an army back at home while you're doing this is really important as well. In every matchup, it's not even just TVT. You kind of want to have this position on... Uh, you you kind of always want to do this when you're pushing out with the big army. So you, so you don't lose to any kind of base trade scenarios. 
And I could even leave back more at home. Like, I'd like to normally leave like three or four tanks back at home in TVT. Because doing counterattacks is pretty common in this matchup. But understanding this right here, where you can siege up, is really important. So, like, even right now, like, let's see what other positions that we can get on this map. You know, like, even, um. Even down here can be kind of annoying, I guess. Oh yeah, look, let's look at this. So like, here's another little ramp that we can get up on. So like, let's say this is out of vision. This could be out of vision of a turn. You got tanks right here. You could have a couple marines up the front. And um, you could even probably move up a couple tanks, like up on this high ground. And you'd be hitting his third base, or maybe den denying mining or something. So kind of look for these um positions on all these maps you know let's say late game i just saw a spot another spot let's just say late game he has this base right here you have vision control of the tower you notice okay well you know you're gonna try to mine from there well let me just drop right here now he can't mine from here you control this ramp you know ramp control like i said is really important you're denying a base so there's just a lot of different ways i know i'm going on forever for scouting and knowledge of the game or whatever but this is like the core of tvt all these little marines on the map this is all super important for this matchup so now that we've kind of covered some of that stuff let's go ahead and go back to this so the very last thing that you kind of need in in TVT in most matchups is micro. And it's not to say that it isn't important because getting in tank fights and stuff is absolutely important. But I will say that this position stuff that I was talking about, getting on the ramp, doing all that stuff, that's that's where it really matters. It doesn't matter how good your micro is if you're having to walk up a ramp against six siege tanks. There's no amount of micro that's going to save you versus that. But let's go ahead and just kind of go over what some micro things you can do in this matchup. Let's go ahead and go back to the SC2. So let's just talk about some general things that you can do in other matchups too, but they're really important in TVT. Just some scenarios. So let's just say this scenario of the late game where they, they were sieged up you know, on your base in the late game, and it was just three tanks. You can take your three marines and do this. You can, so the way you do this with the medevac is you right click the medevac, hit D, and then click on the medevac, and you're, you just do this with the medevac, and the marines will automatically drop for you. And instead of this, like if you hit D only and then move it, it'll only drop marines like that. But if you have it moving, so like right click it somewhere, D on the medevac, they'll drop out. This is really important versus mech and in scenarios like this. This could really make a huge difference. And also like if you're dropping somewhere, like on a map like right here, and you want to get on a whole mineral line, you could do this. So it's it's a pretty important little technique to know if you haven't known already, and that's that has to do with micro. So let's let's go back to the scenario. There's three tanks here, and the tanks ranges like if you get close on top of and like I'm sure everybody knows if you get on top of tanks, you know you could drop like this, right? And you would be able to kill the tanks without taking any hits. Now, let's say, uh, just for the example here, I'm going to bring some marines over here. Um, there's some marines there, right? And you have your own marines. But let's say he's not really paying attention. This happens a lot, and like, where they're just kind of like sitting like this. There's some marines there. So... You going on top like this is probably going to be a lot harder to do. So what you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna take like a little force. Let's wait for the uh, speed to come back here. So what you'll do is so let me let me hotkey this. This is something that uh, you should get used to doing. You're gonna speed boost this medevac and start dropping it, and then come in with these marines. 
And then you, you start splitting them forward, like, it kind of happened pretty quickly, but as you're, mo you're moving the marines down versus tanks, you kind of want to send a couple forward, like this. So then the very first, so if, if these do, so like when you do drop the medevacs on top and they get on top of this, they'll probably start shelling on the marines that are coming out first in the medevac, but if not, you normally want to send a couple marines up in front while you're stemming up. So it, it's a tough thing to do, but that's that's the kind of thing you want to do though. So you're coming down and you're going to send a couple marines like up, up forward on the thing. Even like maybe before your, like the initial blow that you're going to do to break it, you probably want to send like two marines in front, you know what I'm saying? So this is kind of like basic little micro that you can do in TVT. You know, if you're panicking, you can get on top of these siege tanks, come up with another side army here, and you're on top of the tanks, and they won't really affect you. And this is pretty important versus mech too, and this is why you want to have air control versus mech. So like, if there was a bunch of tanks right here, and you have bio and like marauders and stuff, you like split them up, and you do this, and you attack into it, you know, while doing, you know, that that's pretty brutal. That's how you kind of counter mech too, and I just kind of brought all these units. I just did the all army hotkey and brought all the units over, but <clears throat> that is a little bit of the micro you can do. And if you're trying to break siege tank lines and you take engagements, just make sure, like, you know, don't have your marines be clumped up like this. Like, if you're attacking somewhere, start splitting them to the side like this at least you know and then continuing to go forward because then the tank shots aren't going to be as effective so that's some of the micro that you can do in tvt um i'm trying to think of what else that we can go over so far we've basically gone over like kind of the general stuff in TVT. The next thing we're going to have to go over now is I'm going to probably load up a replay and talk about just some of the different things that can be going on in TVT. But let me just think really quickly what else there is. For the most part, this is pretty much it. Like the, the positional stuff, like this is kind of stuff that you need to know in TVT. All these cliffs taking ramp control, this is really important. You know, bringing, keeping an army back at home, really important a lot of this is like very basic stuff in TVT that I think um, if you didn't know already is gonna help you a lot moving forward because having these kind of things these positions and strategy is what makes TVT so complex and so fun so let's go ahead and let's transition into a replay so I'm just gonna edit the video and it's just gonna go straight to the replay. Okay, so we're in the replay. Let me go ahead and take down the sound. And I wanna go ahead and talk about how you go about scouting in this matchup. Because right now, we're gonna both be doing some sort of build order, but it doesn't really matter what build order you do, just kinda how we were talking about earlier until you scout. So you have to kind of scout out the other Terran and see what they're going for. So like right now we're both going one base and you see how he sent his SCV out pretty early. He's sending this out pretty early to get some nice info. I mean he's going to see my two gases. You know he's checking, you know he knows that I'm probably on uh, one base. He sees that I have the factory going down. So he basically knows what's going on in this game. Um, against me. Now, let's go ahead and go to my vision really quickly. And let's just look at... Um, yeah, let me change one thing really quick because it looks like it kind of changed. It always kind of is annoying when you can't see that. Okay. So we're going to look at my command center. So I already dropped my first mule. Hopefully I will this game. I normally do. Um, I usually scan. So I'm getting a, a widow mine. I normally scan at the second timing. 
And this is really important because it's going to let you see what the other Terran is doing. He came in and scouted, scouted and seen what I was doing. So right here, second scan timing, I scan and see what he's doing right now. So I kind of know, you can kind of just judge what's going on. And, there, and like when you scan, there's going to be a ton of different things that are going on. And there's a lot of mind games that can go on with this, especially at a high level play. So there could be a reactor here, a tech lab on the on the factory. Uh, the tech lab could be on the starport. Um, he could be swapping. Like maybe you scan and these two are in the air. So like maybe he's going to swap the starport down on the tech lab. Or maybe that was his intention to get Cloak Banshee. But then after the scan's done, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to continue getting siege tanks. So they don't think... So then they make turrets and over overreact to maybe... Banshees, but you but you see how like the mind games can happen in TVT and why this can kind of be a little weird But when I scan here, there's no add-ons in any of these buildings And this is usually showing that and I've seen that a hellion came out. So it looks like it's gonna be a marine hellion drop So that was like what I was thinking when I was in this game. So I kind of had an idea. Okay. Well, it's gonna be marine hellion. Let me turn this down so that was my first reaction when I sca uh, scanned that. I'm going to be going for Cloak Banshee this game. And then maybe, like, let's say I scanned him and he had the, uh, the add-on on the starport, like how I'm about to do it right now. Then maybe I go for a Raven first instead of a Cloak Banshee because I'm going to counter his Banshee. You know, and it doesn't cost me any turrets. You know, maybe I get a Raven and a, a Viking out, and I defend with my Marines. So this is kind of like the thinking that you kind of have in the early game at TBT. Especially when you're both on one basis, because it can kind of get uh, crazy. So I go for a Raven this game, because... Um, and, like, I saw that he was just getting his add-ons... But I go for a Raven just because I want to play a little bit safer. I had a feeling that he was going to go for the Hellion, the Hellions like I was talking about. And I think that the Raven is a bit more defensive for that. So that's why I ended up going for the Raven. I could still go for the Cloak Banshees, but I wanted to go for the Raven. And I'm going to go for a tank and stuff. So here he drops. I had this Whittle Mine here, and it uh, hit the Medivac, and I targeted with my Marines on the Medivac. So I kind of already knew that something like this was coming. And then I have the Raven out. So right now he has a faster CC than I do. And he built um, a turret because he might think that I'm going for Cloak Banshee. So like I kind of forced him to build two turrets because he thought I was going to go for Cloak Banshee. He didn't see... When he came into my base, he didn't see this Raven pop out. So he's just thinking that it's going to be Cloak Banshee that's coming for him. But what I decided to do this game is, is that I adjusted my build this game because I knew he was going for Hellions. So I went for a Raven to help defend versus that if I needed it. And then I was going to do a counter tank push because Hellions are really weak. So if you open Hellions, you're probably going to have delayed tanks or have delayed tech behind that and that's just then like I said earlier like scouting and build order you know what I mean like you I had a build order this game I was gonna go for banshees but then I changed it up and went for two medivacs a raven and I was gonna do a tank drop two tanks and the eight marines and maybe I wouldn't normally do this versus other builds but um this is what I end up doing now the transition me getting the barracks on the uh tech lab this is a pretty normal transition so the transition is usually always the same with build orders but I go across the map right now with this because I know that he just made these hellions he's not gonna have much at home to defend and then he also thought I was going for cloak banshees so he had a cyclone he made a cyclone and turrets and wasted kind of his money a little bit so I come in I get sieged up, I get a turret down, I kind of lose a raven, but I have a, a decent position here. So like we were talking about earlier, like positioning in TVT, I could probably have placed myself a little bit better. 
But I'm kind of sieging and interrupting his Merline. You see these add-ons that he had? This also comes down to building placement. Like, I don't know if I would normally build my barracks there. It's a little risky because, you know, the he can get the clip control down here. But since I got this control like I did, I was able to take get rid of some add-ons. So and I, and I kind of talked about that a little bit earlier. And then he has to pull SVs to hold this. And then like I micro back my tanks a little bit. And then target this tank down and then just based off of a simple little adjustment in my build went a long way. So like he went for a Hellion drop. Hellion drops usually have later tanks and later uh, tech or anything like that. And he went kind of for a fast CC. Now, like, I didn't really plan on that, but look what I've got. I've got my CC down in the low ground. You know, I have higher SCV count now. I transitioned into three barracks, kind of like he did. So, my build order is around the same thing of what he's doing, but I adjusted it a little bit more to be a bit stronger for this timing, if that makes sense. So, this is, like, one example of a replay in TVT where the scouting really does help out a lot in the matchup. So let's go over another replay. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the video and go to the next replay. Okay, so I'm in the next replay now and I want to talk about... This is a much different game. Let me turn this down. This is a much different game than the last one. I still start out the same. Let me turn down the sounds again. Um, oh yeah, let me change back this setting so we can see health bars. Um, damaged. Okay, so. I kind of do basically the same build this game. And this was kind of in a time where I was kind of experimenting with the Raven, so... Because the Raven is pretty safe in this matchup, so I ended up, so my thinking this game was, because I think uh, the game that we just went over before, where I got that Raven, um, I've just been liking give, getting the Raven in TVT at this point. You don't have to get Raven, it's not like the best thing, it's just nice to have versus like other Cloak Banshee, it's a good counter to other things. So I go for a Raven this game, and this guy happens to be going for Cloak Banshee on his side, but we don't really know that yet. But I get the widow mine like I did before. And then I'm getting a tank. And I just get one Raven out this game. And then I start getting Metavax. Because I had the idea of doing a drop versus him. So I scan here and I see what's going on. So I see he's got two barracks, he's got cloak, so he he's getting some, Vi uh, not vikings, he's getting a banshee out. He's getting a viking to follow up with this and he's getting another barracks so he's going to be very aggressive and I have my base on the way before him. So I kind of know in this scenario, I'm the one that has to defend his stuff. I can't be the aggressor now. I'm the one that has to stay home. And defend whatever he's going to be doing. So I know that the bench is coming. So you see me positioning. And I'm going to put my tank in my main base. Sieging up. Or kind of away a little bit. But. I'm just getting ready for. And, and right here. the uh, This went off. I put this right here. Because this is like a really common way for the Banshee to go. So let me back it up just a little bit. He flew um, right here and didn't notice that and then lost his Banshee. So I defend his first little push that he does. And then I, what I do is, is that I get, um, I was going to get more Marines because I know that he's doing this follow up like this, being very aggressive. And he's here right now sieging up. So I come over here to deal with this. I drop my auto turrets down. I control my tank. And I get a good position on him. And then I push this back. And then right here, like I was talking about earlier, 
this may be like a little unnecessary, but I wanted to get this tank. So I, I boosted the medevac because I didn't want him to run away and did the little drop micro that I was talking about. And I wanted to catch this tank. My whole focus was to get this tank because he can't really siege up on me if he has all his tanks dead. I have two tanks. He's not going to do anything if his tanks are dead. So that's why I end up going for this tank. And then I have this 3rd CC. I'm kind of floating a lot right now. But controlling this is really important. And then I think I end up losing this Raven by accident. I try to save it, but it ends up dying. So now I've successfully held off what he was doing. So if you know that you're you and the and the other person that you're playing against, you're doing the same builds, like you're both on one base, then you get to be a little greedy a bit greedier than him so I went for a third CC here because I knew that he was going to be trying to expand to kind of get back in this game so I went for the third CC and then I think I go for the second and third barracks afterwards so I was trying to get more Marines and then I do my transition that I normally do I get the barracks swap the uh, starport and stuff start getting stim and get my two barracks and then I start making some more medevacs. I, I had the idea that I'm going to do a drop. He just tried to do some pressure against me, and I figured, well, maybe he's not going to have as much at his home. So I do a little drop. I have air control at the Vikings, too. I come in, and I drop behind his mineral line. Now, I probably could have sieged up on this side, but he had pretty good position in this game for me not to go on this side. So I went in the back of his base. This is going to disrupt mining, and it's going to be really hard for his marines to get through these choke points. And look, I put the Vikings out in front. So what we were talking about earlier, like in the early game, having uh, the control on the air is really important. I ended up killing seven SCVs out of this. He has to lift up his barracks, is disrupting his... Uh, did that stop? Oh yeah, he already finished them, but still, it's it's disrupting his combat and stuff. It's just annoying to deal with. This is probably a little weird for me to bring up my uh, tanks like this, but I bring them back. I'm killing SCVs. I'm killing a lot of SCVs, so I ended up killing 15 SCVs out of this, and I'm super ahead. And meanwhile, I'm about to take my third base. I have my double E base going, my fourth and fifth racks. So, like, if you look at it in this game, like, he has an upgrade on me. But pretty soon, I'm going to have both my upgrades going at the same time. And it's going to put me at a big advantage. And I already have my third base going on the way, and he had to sacrifice a bunch of SCVs to hold this attack. So now, I have a huge position advantage in this game. I'm going to have combat done before him, and I'm going to have 1-1 one, one done. Um, I think a little bit before him. He has plus 1 attack done, but I'm going to catch up pretty soon. And because I'm ahead and I take my third base, I normally get a sensor tower and I get uh, a couple missile turrets around my base. So he can't really drop either. And I know this is here. So like I was talking about earlier about control and TVT and why it's really important. Is look how I deal with his little drop here and how I split my marines. So I don't have combat, but look how um, I start to move my marines. You see how I move my marines to the side right there? Now, I probably could have done it a little bit better, but you could see that I moved them just a little bit to the side. And I'm in a really good position this game. I just have combat done, and he's just starting because I interrupted it. I'm taking... There's not much to do right now. I'm just clearing my fourth base when I want to get it. I'm getting turrets at my third... Because I know I'm really ahead right now. I know how many SVs I killed. It's all about the, the scouting and the knowledge. The knowledge that we know that he's behind. I got my 2-2 started before him. And I transitioned. So I went from a 1 base turn up until three, or into 3 bases. So another thing that I talked about earlier that's really important is that you see where I'm rallying my units now? I'm rallying everything back at home. So I'm going to do a little push on him, but I'm going to keep everything back at home. And maybe a lot of people deal with this a lot, where they get a lot of base trade scenarios. But you see, like, I'm rallying everything back at home. I don't even know that his army is here, but 
I see it now, right? Like, if let's go to, like, my vision. I'm probably going to see that he has an army back there. And I'm going to get position on his ramp that I was talking about. So, or on his cliff. So we're using a lot of the things I was talking about earlier in that little custom. And look, I, he's got his army here, and I see it. You see, like, how I just saw that? Now, I have army here on purpose for this, and I'm sieged up. And I know he's going to try to come up, so I pull some SCVs. Because I know this is kind of like what he's got going on there. And I have to defend this. And I pull back. I let my SVs go back in mine, I think. But he can't really break this. And I have control of his main base. So I'm killing everything here. And then look. He can't come up on the ramp. And that's all I'm trying to do. Because I know if I kill all his production right now, he's going to lose the game. And he's out of position. And he can't even come up my ramp. And I got into his main base, killed all his production. He can't get any um, um, army out. I kept my stuff at home. So this has a lot of the stuff that I was talking about earlier in that custom. And this is bringing a lot, a lot of it into practice in these games. So you saw the scouting I did early game. To kind of see, and I adjusted my build or, build order in some uh, like different ways. Like you saw how I was switching the barracks to get more marines. I got some extra medevacs. And I decided to do to do that drop because I knew that he just invested all a lot into doing that. So I wanted to put counter pressure on him. So this is this is kind of how TVT works. There's probably a lot more um, to go over, but this is basically what TVT is and kind of what I want to get uh, across to other people. So like when they're trying to learn TVD, this is kind of the basics you should know. And then from here on, like just, um, I'll probably end up posting a build order. I'll, I'll give a link to my Discord down below because I offer free Terran coaching. And I'm gonna try to find like a really good, solid Terran build. Like it's not, like I said, there's no perfect build. Like I'm not gonna give you the perfect build because it doesn't exist. But I'll give you a build that will help you change, you know, around like based on what you scout. Like how I did this game, like I just changed a couple things and I was able to defend things really easily. So this seems to be it for TVT. I know this is a long video, it's going to be about an hour long, but it does cover a lot of TVT. And let me bring back the scene here. Let's go back to this. And it covers a lot of what I was talking about with this, uh, these five points. And I basically went over these last three points because you have to kind of, you got to figure yourself out here in the first two. But these last three, I went over pretty in detail for TVT. And this applies to other matchups too. Like and take what kind of what I said in TVT and kind of apply it to other matchups. But TVT, I really needed to break it down to like really explain everything about it. So this should help a lot of people understand how to scout um, in the early game, how to get vision control on the map, either with sensor towers or putting marines around, knowing where they're going to be. So there's a lot that goes in the TVT. The little things that make, you know, they, that come out to be huge things, like me in that last game, putting my army and my natural to defend, you know, a potential base race. Maybe that game goes different. Maybe the base race goes in his favor. Who knows? But from playing a lot of games, you just know to keep your army back at home just in case something like that happens. I didn't even know his army was out. I just was prepared for it being out on the map. So, And I had the positional advantage because I was in his main base. And we talked about that earlier, being in the main base, how devastating that can be for a Terran, cutting, out, cutting off all their depots and all that stuff, and using clip control, having ramp control, having positional control on the map. So there's a lot of things I talked about. And I really hope that this helps uh, you guys understand TVT more. And I really wanted to be very detailed about it. I might make some more of these like this for other matchups. But other matchups are a lot more straightforward than TVT is. So that's why I went a lot more in detail for this. So, hey, only for an hour long video. I think you guys got a lot out of it. So thanks for watching. And uh, definitely join my Discord if you haven't already for free coaching. And you know, check out my stream or whatever it is, but yeah, thanks for watching guys.